Hi everybody, I'm Ryan. Today we're going to continue our constructed set review of The Brothers War with Blue. So I'm going to go through all the cards I think will make a splash in Constructed, uh, normally either Standard, Modern, or Pioneer, and skip the cards I don't think will touch Constructed. I'm not going to give any of these a rating at all. The plan is instead to just talk about what their role in possible decks they would be in. So let's jump right into it. One with the Multiverse is a 7 mana, 6 generic, 2 blue enchantment. It says you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. And once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. One with a multiburst just seems like a better in some ways and worse in some ways omniscience. I think in most scenarios, I would rather just cast Omniscience, so it seems like a slightly worse one. But I could see one with the Multiverse being played as a one of to make the Tutor Piles in the Lotus combo deck to like more easily force your opponent uh, to pick the Omniscience if you like really, really need the Omniscience for whatever reason. But other than that, it's possible if an Omniscience deck comes around in Standard, we just play this. But immediately, I, I, the only deck I could see it existing in is Lotus and Omniscience is already legal in Pioneer. Teferi Temporal Pilgrim is five mana, three generic, two blue. It is a Planeswalker. It says whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. For zero loyalty, draw a card. For minus two, create a two, two blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. And it's minus 12. His target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into its owner's libraries. So this seems like a really cool uh, finisher for control decks, specifically in standard. Uh, the reason I say standard is the best control deck in Pioneer is blue-white, and I think Teferi Hero Dominaria is a better version of like what you want. I could see this played uh, in a, maybe a smaller number in the blue-white decks in Pioneer, because I think it's very, very powerful um, in standard and Pioneer, to be able to go uh, turn four Wandering Emperor, get a guy to protect it, turn five to Fairy, get a guy to protect both of them. Like, that's a really, really powerful curve. And we can get that in Pioneer. I think, again, I think we just played Fairy Hero Dominaria in this slot. But that exists in Standard as well. And so I think we're going to be seeing more blue white control decks uh, with that, like, crazy, like, removal spell, removal spell, Wandering Emperor, protect it, to Fairy, protect it. That's going to be super dope. Especially since it's really easy to get counters on this Teferi. Like, yeah, we can draw a card off of it and it'll get one counter. But you can just, like, make a guy every turn by just, like, using the other cards in your deck that draw cards. Which the decks that are going to be playing Teferi are going to draw a bunch of cards. And that's pretty cool. And those guys will get big very quickly. Drafna, founder of Latnam, is a two-mana, one generic, one blue. Legendary creature, human artificer advisor you can pay two na two mana one blue one generic uh to return target artifact you control to its owner's hand and you can pay three mana and tap it to copy target artifact spell you control and it's a two one so i think there are a couple homes this could exist in uh, there's a lot of awesome artifacts being printed in the set and in all of these artifacts being printed in this set it's possible there'll be an artifact focused standard deck that that draft will find its way into I, I haven't mapped one out yet but there's a world and for the same reasoning, it's possible that will exist in Pioneer. Uh, I could see Hammer Time playing this card as some numbers. Too bad it's not an artifact itself. But so often with Hammer Time, if your opponent like stops your initial aggro, often you'll find yourself with like one or two hammers on the battlefield, like just trying to get there, or or maybe like without creatures, or or even if you have creatures, being able, unable to equip those hammers. But you still have a Sagarda's aid, and you're like, ah, eh, it's fine. But it's kind of neat, like Drafna. You know, especially in the in the late game in Hammer Time, if you have excess mana, like being able to like return the hammer to my hand, play the hammer with the Sagarda's aid, maybe even copy the hammer, two hammers enter the battlefield, I win. Um, seems like a pretty neat late game. And I definitely think Hammer Time suffers in that late game aspect. Though, how much are Hammer Time players willing to take away from the early game? I, I am not 100% sure. There's also probably some artifact prison deck, so this would be dope in. But. Perkle Master Wizard is three mana, two blue, one generic, human, wizard, advisor. And it says, at the beginning of your end step, if you cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order, and there are two four. I don't think this is powerful enough for modern. 
But in spell-based tempo or control decks, I could see playing this card. Like, having a card... Top five cards, like, if, if you're, like, mostly instants and sorceries, and you cast an instant or sorcery, um, you're, like, very likely to, to just, like, be able to replace those cards over and over. Um, which I think is one of the big issues with the standard, like, mono blue and blue red tempo decks, is they, like, run out of gas reasonably quickly. And that's kind of tough. One thing to note here, and maybe the part of the card that will make it not playable, is it has to be during your turn. So it makes it a little difficult in control decks because you want to leave up like counter magic. Like this is definitely a way late game card in control decks. But I could see this being played um, as some number in these tempo decks. Now, how many instances of sorceries are you willing to take out? Especially since you're already playing a playset of Hottie Jin and a playset of Talarian Terror. But there's a world. I'm not sure where it would fit in super cleanly, but this is a very powerful card if it can work. Maybe in a removal based blue red control deck as the only creature. That'd be kind of cool. Urza's Command is a four mana, two generic, two blue instant. It says choose two, just like all the other commands. Creatures you don't control get minus two, minus zero until end of turn. Create a tapped power stone token. Create a tapped 0, zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. So it's like the Urza Saga uh, artifacts. And it's scry one, then draw a card. I think this card's reasonably powerful. I think the issue with this card is you need to already be artifact focus because I think the construct part of the card is the most powerful part of the card and you probably want to capitalize on the combat tricks or or at least want to like be able to have so much time and really slow them down to give them minus two minus zero and scry one draw card is already like you know reasonably powerful so again to kind of go back to the other uh cards we looked at where th this might exist in standard this probably isn't powerful enough for pioneer but this could exist in standard in uh any sort of blue artifact decks that might start popping up i could see playing this card it's definitely one of the weaker commands, in my opinion, though. But really, a blue card that's instant that says draw a card, how bad can it be? Defabricate is two mana, one blue, one generic. Instant, choose one. Counter target artifact or enchantment spell. If a spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into a sonus graveyard. Or counter target activator triggered ability. So we got like a sti two mana stifle in standard, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is probably going to be played in the sideboard. Because I, I, I think Wizards is expecting uh, one or two artifact decks to be uh, to be extremely powerful. Uh, I could see this played in the sideboard uh, in Standard. I could see this played in the sideboard of, of Pioneer. Frankly, maybe even like a modern control deck. I'm not sure if this is a reprint or not. But it seems like a very powerful sideboard card. Forging the Anchor is three mana, two generic, one blue. Sorcery says, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of artifact cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Again, this could definitely find its way into that. I, this is definitely not powerful enough for Pioneer, I don't think. But any sort of standard artifact deck that comes out of this set, super good, super powerful. We love those. You know, being able to just like fill up your hand for three mana is pretty awesome. Especially if it's a slower like setup, more, more of a setup deck. Zephyr Sentinel is a two mana, one blue, one generic human soldier, flash flying. When Zephyr Sentinel enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature you control to his owner's hand. If that was a soldier, put a plus one plus one counter on Zephyr Sentinel. So there's probably going to be a human slash maybe double tribal soldier deck that pops out of this set in standard and maybe even making a splash in Pioneer. In Pioneer, I think the peak of this card is obviously like you know, uh, save one of your guys, preferably like Thalia's Lieutenant, uh, on end step, on PAP, replay Thalia's Lieutenant, puts a counter on, even, even puts a counter on Zephyr Sentinel and all, all, all of your people again. Like, that's probably the dream in Pioneer. Uh, this, this is definitely a draw to being white blue in the soldier deck. Because this card's very powerful, right? It can protect things. It gets bigger if it protects soldiers, which the idea is you'd be a sol soldier tribal deck. It has evasion and it has flash, so you get to play sort of as a flash deck. You know, so if you go really wide, you jam in, they try to, like, stop your, like, most powerful stuff. Especially if it's, like, really late game. Like, cause it happens in standard. You get really late, right? Uh, you have the rescue retriever, the five-mana dog. Like, you jam, like, your, uh, you know, your, your homies block, and you're, like, you have seven mana, and you're just, like, flash in Zephyr Sentinel, return rescue retriever, play rescue retriever with flash. Like everything gets counters, everything gets like bigger again. And uh, it seems like really cool. I, I, I could see playing blue because of this card, but we'll see what else we got here.
Curate is two mana, one generic, one blue instance. Is Surveil two draw card? This is not very powerful, but if you're playing the Talarian Terror decks or any like Graveyard Matters decks uh, that want to or Flash decks that want to play at instant speed, I could see playing some number of this. I'm not 100 percent sure if it'll make its way into Constructed, but I did want to mention it. Machine over matter is two mana, one generic, one blue, instant. Spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact creature, so if you control an artifact creature, it costs one blue. This is return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So non-land permanent, I think, matters, because I believe most of the cards in the set that have this effect has to be a creature. But this could totally be played if there's, like, an artifact-based tempo deck, which, again, I think it's totally possible will exist seeing all the artifact, awesome, awesome artifacts in this set. In standard, I mean. I don't think this will be played in any other format. Scatteray is two mana, one generic, one blue. Instant counter target artifact or creature spell unless the controller plays four. I think it's a really powerful counter spell for standard. So I don't think this will find its way into eternal formats. There are better versions of what it does. But paying four mana, you have to be such... You have to be so deep in the late game to be able to pay four mana. I could honestly see people straight up playing this card over Essence Scatter, especially if artifacts become super, super powerful. So those are the blue cards in the Brothers War that I think might touch Constructed Play and where I think they will find themselves in Constructed Play. I'm super excited for the set. I'm really excited for like a standard artifact deck, actually. I hope you enjoyed this Constructed set review. Please let me know if you think I missed something, if you think I, or if you think I did a good job. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Check me out in other social medias. Links are above me and in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.